Hi, hi, hi. Welcome. My name is Steve Rain. I'm here to give you a review on the Mind Sports Olympiad Entropy event that happened last Sunday. Uh, it was played over several hours of play, over six hours of play, seven rounds of play um, to crown our Entropy World Champion. It's not just the Mind Sports Olympiad, it's the Entropy World Championship event um, at the MSO 2020. It's all online this year, obviously, due to COVID. And I imagine if you're watching this, you are. Uh, here to uh, learn some strategy from entry. I'll just review how your favorite players did, if you do know about it. Uh, don't fear though, I will talk roughly how to play. It is a two player abstract game where you're trying to place uh, discs on the board. So basically, at the end of a game, you're gonna take it in turns to place discs effectively on the board. One person places discs and one person moves them, and then you score it, and then you switch over uh, and then the other person will be placing discs and moving them. The person placing discs is chaos. They're trying to create uh, no patterns on the board. They're trying to create disorder. Um, and the person moving the discs is playing order. So you're playing chaos and order. And order, uh, once a disc is placed, you can move any disc a bit like a chess, uh, a bit like a rook in chess. And you're trying to put it in a position to make palindromes. Now, it was played online this year, so it, the computer will do the scoring as we're going along, which will make following it a bit easier than it is live. Um, so what we're looking at is for palindromes. So if we just look at this top row, this number at the side said it's worth eight, which means there are palindromes of length eight in there. What that means is that you can see these three spaces here, it goes black, blue, black, which if you read it the other way around, also goes black, blue, black. So this is a palindrome of three. Also on the same row, you've got this palindrome as well, brown, brown, black, blue, black, brown, and it reads the same both ways around. So this five, although it's a five, it contains within it a three. So in total, this set of five discs gets eight points. Those last two discs don't do anything. So we can have a look at potentially row uh, 11 here. Uh, if we're counting row, apologies, the middle row, which scores 11, you can see that it goes red, blue, red for three points. It also goes red, white, red for three points. It also goes, uh, where's the other one? Blue, red, white, red, blue for five points. So that's three for this, uh, three for this, and then five for that. So you can see somewhere is really record. This bottom row, the 14 comes just from these five because you get brown, red, brown, red, brown for five. You also get brown, red, brown for three red, brown, red for three, and brown, red, brown for three. So the fewer colours your palindromes are made up of, they're usually the higher they score. Um, so that's how it's going to work. Uh, what happened in the event is it was played over several rounds, and each round was VP. So you can see in this particular match, I think I was playing Jose Segura, uh, one of the Spanish contingent. This is my round two match. Um, and I won by seven points. What that does is it gets changed into victory points using this scale here. So you can see that seven points is what I won by, and that gets turned into effectively a score out of 20. I won 15 and a bit to 4.9 and a bit. Uh, you can see that if you get a win of 30 or more, that gets you a 20 nil victory and you can't get any more than 20. So what you're trying to do is, as you're playing the game, you're trying to get your score as order as high as you can, and you're trying to reduce their scores order. So the difference in these scores, my total was 89 if you count up uh, all the rows and columns there, you'll get 89. And that would be my score over the game. Um, so what we're going to look at now is potentially the uh, what would happen in the event. And the event was over seven rounds, and we're going to join the event in round, uh, going into round three. Um, there were 48 players in the event. What I've done is I've got a scan of the top 14 or so, um, and we're going to follow roughly how they do throughout the event. So you can see uh, after two matches, David Jameson, I think David Jameson is the four or five. He's won it five times. I think he's won it the last four years. So David Jameson is our current world champion. Uh, he's got two 20s. Paul Colk has got 20 and an almost 20. James Heppel's up there. Martin Hamer's up there. Andres Kusk still challenging for the pentamind as we record this video. Uh, myself, I, I dipped a bit towards the end of the event, but that was my second round match we saw. I won by 15 and a bit to four and a bit. So my opponent is... Uh, below position 14 at some point. Um, but we're going to join it in round three, and I believe we're going to join David Jameson playing Paul Colk. So the two leaders at the moment, David Jameson did say Paul Colk uh, was a pretty good player, so it should be a close match, we hope. Uh, Paul Colk, if you do, if you have attended the Man Sports Olympia but haven't met Paul Colk, that is Kuno's father. Kuno's also playing the event down there. They're both from Estonia, uh, and David Jameson, I believe he is Welsh. So we're going to join 
their match in round three. So what I'm going to do for most of these, uh, for the first, for this match specifically, I'll probably play it at the pace it was played and talk through uh, what they're doing, what sort of strategy things they want, anything that I think they've missed or why they've done certain things over to other certain moves. And we'll talk about it as we go. We're going to play this in real time. So we're going to play the match at the pace it was played at. Uh, the whole match should take about 45 minutes or so on. We're going to look at three matches today. So we're going to look at the standings after round three, after round six, and after round seven. Um, so let's join it and we'll take it away. And uh, I think you'll find that um, David is playing order first. So what happens is Kuno, sorry, not Kuno, apologies, Paul places a disc on the board and then David will move it a bit like a rook in chess. Um, this currently doesn't score, but if you ever get pieces that are two away, like two away from each other, so if the brown was one to the right or this brown was one to the left, that will score regardless of what colour goes in the middle. Um, so at some point David will move either this space, this one space that way or this one space that way. Uh, and you'll see that he'll start to score three points. Uh, what, um, yeah, you can see there. So he's got three points. And what you'll see Paul doing is try to put discs in a place that they're hard to move around the board. So initially, what you're, what you're aiming to get, ideally, although the best players won't let this happen, is you're, you're aiming to get a line down the centre, either vertically or horizontally, um, so that you have two halves of the board to play them. The other thing you're trying to do is you stop them trying to connect colours of the same type. So the reason that Paul placed the yellow one here is to stop bringing this down, the brown down to the bottom row. And the reason they placed it here instead of in one of these three spaces is because there was a black on this side, it's also hard to get the yellow onto this edge. This green, it's hard to join up with that one and it's also stopping the yellow going across and the yellow stopping the brown going down. So you can see they'll play the first few moves at quite a fast pace. You can see they're moving things about it. So they're, they're threatening to get a green to the top. And because uh, Paul drew a green, they couldn't block it. In Entropy, there are seven uh, colours. And of each colour, there are seven discs. And at the end of the game, all the colours will come out. So towards the end of the game, you'll know exactly what's missing from the bag. And you'll uh, good players will know and be preparing to make the best use of the colours to come out. Uh, so I imagine one of these yellows is going to join up this edge here. Yeah, I probably moved the... I don't think it matters, but maybe the bottom one, because this one's a bit easy to move later. Yeah, they moved the bottom one. And they'll be lucky to get this yellow on this edge as well. So I imagine that whatever piece Paul picks will probably go in probably this spot here, uh, as long as it's not yellow. Uh, no, they've just, they've just stopped it. So this is, I was talking to David about it, this is a negative move for Paul because what you're not looking to do is um, place pieces on the edge. You generally want to place pieces in the middle and make their movement around the board harder. The more movement they have, the more threats they can do. So David's threatening to move the green into this gap. We'll see, yeah, so Paul's drawn a white. So I imagine David will move it to the side, yeah. So threatening the green in the game. And the, the reason you might put it here is it takes two moves to get it out. Um, but the reason not to put it here is it blocks the movement around the board. You can see that uh, Paul drew this green one, so David could uh, add those with threats. I imagine you're probably moving the reds, one of the reds uh, to the edge here, trying to join the edges up. In theory, at some point, you've got a brown to the bottom or a green to the top, and you'd like to be able to do them, but you can see Paul's making it difficult to do that in just one move. You don't really want to put this green to this edge, because then you're starting to make a line down here, so I imagine you'll move the red to the top. He could also threaten the yellow to this spot here, but I think I prefer red to the top, but we'll see what happens. Okay. And what uh, David will avoid doing is uh, is making lots of pockets. So pockets of one are really good for chaos. That is Paul, the the uh, the person who's placing discs. Pockets of one are really good because they give you a free spot to place awkward discs that you that your opponent can't move into threatening positions. So uh, so at this point, this is this is what David doesn't really want. He doesn't want to start creating lots of pockets of one. So you'll see him try to avoid doing that. At some point, he'll probably bring this yellow down here to to keep to stop being this being a pocket. Um, but like I say, he's a better player than me. I imagine it'll be yellow down or red up here. Uh, 
And just remember, if this yellow is moved, yes, they move the red up. So the right, the, so there's an interesting choice here. You could either move red to here to score two points, or you can move this red to here to score three. And the problem with this red to here to score three is that you create another pocket. So I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if David moves the red across to this spot. Um, this black is stopping the yellow coming down, so the yellow coming down here would have scored three. Yeah, so David's done what I've suggested. Also, um, because this column's three, you can never place a green in this column because a green in this column will threaten um, this up here. At some point, David's got the opportunity to move the green here to threaten it. So you've got two choices here. You can move the white down to here uh, to threaten the yellow into the gap, or you could just move the yellow out of the way. You can move the yellow to here or maybe connect this yellow to that yellow because there's quite a few yellows coming on the board now. What you'd like to do ideally is get the yellow out of this column because this column is a good column. You, you putting a red or a green there scores a few points. Uh, David's just clearing up the centre. So you want to keep the centre as clear as you can. And you can see already that David's got two pockets here, a pocket here and a pocket here. So at some point I can see maybe if David's not got any other move to do, he could potentially just move this yellow down just to make sure this isn't a pocket of one. Yeah, so this is this is a decent move, putting the red one here. You could put it here as well, that would have been another gen... Uh, well, actually, no, this is better. It, it's difficult to get the red on this edge, because to do so, you have to move the green into position you don't really want it to be in. You don't really want the green in this column, you want the green in this column. <clears throat> Because green to here at some point also threatens brown down. So every time uh, David clears one from this column, you'll notice that uh, Paul will probably put one back in there. Because at some point there'll be like a double threat here. What I mean by a double threat is if you move the green to this spot, you're threatening a green to the top and a brown to the bottom. And you can't stop both moves with one disc. So now this is an opportunity to move the yellow down. Uh, but again, it depends on the place. So the, again, David's just trying to keep this column clear just to give a threat of a green to the top. Uh, they've also got a brown to the bottom. So this is actually, this is a good one here. So now David can do, the, they can split these greens up. The brown can go through the gap or the green can go to the top. So Paul can actually, and you've got to be careful. So he's drawn a green so he couldn't stop it. So basically, he, this is a lot of points. You can see it's already 16 points. Uh, so David's on 28 points currently. Um... Uh, and uh, Paul placed this green one here just to make these browns a bit more difficult to move about. In theory, at some point you could move this green to here uh, to score three, but you don't really want to do that. You can see that the centre of the board is starting to get a bit uh, more difficult to, what I mean by move things around. So potentially you can move the yellow down here. Uh, it's not ridiculous. You can move the yellow down. Uh, or you can move the green across. I think one of those two seems sensible. The other third possibility, well, third possibility is to move the red out of the way. All right, so he's chosen to do something different. Obviously, David's a much better player than me. Uh, he's moved the yellow to this spot, which is threatening this yellow to the bottom. And if that gets blocked, you can move this yellow to this spot. So that's just two points for David. So they've got the choice, yeah. So um, Paul could have stopped that, but what Paul's trying to do now is using this as an opportunity to try and segregate the board into two halves. So potentially the next piece will probably go, uh, because it was blue, it couldn't go here or here because it would score David points. So the blue went there. But if they pick the right colour, for example, a black piece would have gone here or here very nicely, and you're just trying to cut the board into two halves. Uh, you'll notice there's a few blues in the middle of the board. None of them are scoring, but I imagine that at some point you could do a nice little threat to move the blues. So potentially you can move this blue to this spot and then move the red out of the way to threaten some more blues to join them. But again, this is it, trying to score things across the centre of the board. Yeah, so David's just going to score three points there. He also gives the opportunity to move the browns out. So you can move this brown to here and then split the browns up. Um... The other possibility is you've got blue to this spot for another three points. Uh, 
Um, and if you notice, just counting the different number of sections now. So if you watch uh, a very good player playing a, a weak player, they'll generally only have one or two sections, but you've got a very good player playing a very good player here. So David's concentrating on trying to score points and keeping his flexibility, and Paul is just trying to stop the flexibility. Yeah, so he's moved the brown across, which gives you the option, basically, when you've got two together, if you uh, on the edge of the board, not so much, but two together is pretty good, because at some point you can split them up to get uh, an extra point. But you can also threaten, I don't know if we'll see it at some point today, you can also threaten to get uh, like a five in a row as well. Alright, so you might uh, you might split the reds up or split the browns up here. Or you could put, uh, actually this is a decent move, you could put the blue to this spot. Which scores you two points and you threaten white down for four, for another four. Yeah, so there's white to this spot. Um, only gains David one point, but it frees up the board a bit. Having them all in one clump gives you a lot more space to move about. Yeah, so Paul could have stopped it. This only gains David a point because David's going to lose this three to gain four here. So currently these two rows score seven. I imagine David will move the white to, to here, and this will score nothing, and this will be eight. So it only gains him a point, but it just means that you can see this space, It's if that white was one lower, it would just be a bit easier to move about him. There's a, kind of like a pocket here and a pocket here. And you'll notice that Paul's got one, two, three, four, five, six single spot, spots. If Paul gets a really bad colour, for example, uh, the last green tile's pretty bad, there's also two browns to come, and browns potentially can be quite threatening, so you've got the opportunity to put one of the awkward browns in that pocket. Yeah, so David's moved it down, only gains him a point. This looks like good, but it only gains him a point because he's lost three points to do so. All right, so Paul's got a line down the centre, so there's two halves. So it, oh, you can clearly see that a yellow coming out would be pretty good in this half of the board because all the yellows are there. Um, so David's threatening uh, white to here. And also to give a bit, a bit more space in this bit. So Paul probably has to block that. If Paul draws a white or a green, there's not much they can do. A green there, Scott. Yeah, so they've chosen. The, so in this particular case, you've got to be very careful um, not to always sit there blocking and blocking and blocking. Sometimes you have to let them score some points and just make it more difficult to move about. Uh, also putting a red here, just that scores David three instead of uh, another four. So you'll notice that this, uh, we, we use it says seven, this is a palindrome of three, and it's also two twos, so it's a two here and a two here. So one of the possibilities you can see just to count is you can, uh, at the halfway point and later, you can roughly guess at, uh, you could just move the, I think you just move the yellow across here, yeah. You're threatening black here just for another two points. Uh, so they've blocked that. You could move this brown one across, but I'm not sure it's, I think you lose a bit of tempo if you do that. At some point you can split these browns, but basically this is a space that's there's not, a ton amount of good colours there. So this space here, you can't put a yellow because otherwise there gets you six points. You can't put a green definitely, you can't put a brown, you can't put a blue. So this spot actually, there's a lot of colours that are, uh, are good for David. So this isn't actually that uh, great a spot for um, Paul necessarily. Uh, you've also got a black here and a black here gets you five, but I don't think, I basically, if David threatens that, so he could just move this, he could move this black across, I imagine if he's going to do it, he'll move this black down. Um, and then Paul has to kind of uh, lose efficiency by blocking the spot. So although these are good dumping grounds for, yeah, so David's setting that, so Paul's, uh, either going to let David score this and block the board, or uh, block this spot. Now they're, I think they're two good. They're, they're both very good players. So I don't think they. Uh, I think if Paul doesn't go here, I don't think it's because he missed it. I think he's probably going to try and block this area up. I don't, it's hard to see what piece of John. If you were playing this live, you'd see what piece your opponent's holding in the hand. 
And if you were playing this live on the internet as well, you'd also see what piece they've got in front of them. Uh, so we're kind of reacting a bit to how it's going on. But basically you can see that on the bottom, currently this is worth three, brown, white, brown. And if David manages to get another one here, it will be worth eight because you'll get the palindrome of five as well as the one of three in the middle. Uh, so I think uh, Paul played a brown one here. So he had the opportunity to put it here for two points instead of five. <clears throat> but putting it there would then give David the opportunity to move something else. So uh, a black was one of the few colours that was good to put in that spot. You've got to be careful of putting a black here though, because obviously that would score another six. So but I don't think there's any way for David to force a black. There's only one black left. Uh, what well, a good tip to guesstimate the final score is you count two points for every open space. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's another 20 points. So we reckon David's probably going to score in the low 80s unless something uh, uh, dramatic happens. That seems like a good estimation from the halfway point onwards to do two point per space left at the end. So yellow to this point also means you can go red to here for another three. And what David will be doing, if they haven't got a, a, a great move now, it's just about maximising points, yeah. Um, so you're threatening red down here. Oh, apologies. I think uh, I think that was a mistake by... I think that was a mistake by... Um, Paul, potentially, because this now scores David 5. There was a brown to that spot. So what I said earlier, remember when I said there was two, and if you split it, you make a three? So when David split these two yellows up with a brown on one end of it, a brown to the other end scores you another five for eight points. Um, so red down for three, so Paul might stop that. Again, we don't know quite what colour he's got. Doesn't really work if he's drawn like a, a blue or a green. Uh, but you'll notice that that's the last brown, so there's no more browns to come. There's still two blues, there's still a green, there's still two reds, uh, there's still a black, and there's still two yellows. Yeah, so David's got the opportunity of red down or, or white across was his other possibility. Uh, this is a better one because yellow to um, B6, if you play chess, so this will be spot B6. Yeah, and Paul couldn't block it because he drew a yellow, so that was a good threat to do. With two yellows left in the bag, yellow to here, now scores another five. Um, and it's all sometimes about timing when the threats are. If there's a lot of one particular colour or two particular colours that you, that you that can't be used to block the threat you've got in the bag, that's the opportunity to do it. So you can see there's two blues left, although blues isn't a great colour here. Because there's two blues left, in theory, you can threaten blues. Blues are pretty safe. So basically, Paul, if Paul draws a blue, they can put a blue in this top pocket here. Um, or in this bottom spot here. I think what you'll see David doing... Yeah, so maybe Paul should have put it here, because David can now do green down, and then a blue in this pocket is now not safe. And the advantage with green to here means that green's not really safe. There's one more green to come as well. So green to here means you can't put a green here because that gives you a full palindrome. So I, I like green to this spot. I mean, red here doesn't do anything. Uh, that's already scoring, that's already scoring, that's already scoring. So you could move... I mean, yeah, so are these four tiles are scoring. You don't want to split these up. Uh, and you don't really want to move white up yet. So green to here is, it seems pretty good. Now, whenever the green comes out, it's going to score a lot. Uh, Paul's never going to put it here or here. So the green's going to go in one of these two spots. Um, I think you move the, brown, the, the black down one because in this spot now, blue or green scores three. Uh, and remember, there's two blues and a green to come. Uh, it's played over clocks, so they get, I believe, 12 minutes each per game. This is one game, and then they'll swap over. They'll refresh to 12 minutes, and they'll get another game. So each kind of half a game, half the match will take 24 minutes if they both go to time. And I don't think it happens in any of the games we're probably going to watch, because they're all close-ish games. 
Uh, yes, yeah, so that doesn't score. That doesn't score anything. That's a safe place to put a red. Um, but what Paul will be doing is counting what's coming out. There's two blues. Uh, one's probably got to go in this pocket here. Uh, so the other one can go in one of these two. There's a green, which sort of has to go here. So the green has to go here, which means the two blues, one's up here and one's down here, or both up here. And then the last colour, there is a red. Uh, so red's safe down here. So you could put blue, blue, red, green. That would be the aim. And so what David is trying to do is uh, predict that down there. Yeah, so I think if David moves nothing, which generally you won't want to do, it'll go blue, blue, green, red. Apologies, blue, blue, red, green. That was the wrong way around. Um, and you can see the rows in the columns. He, David's done very well here. I think when David, David got a bit lucky, I think, when he threatened that, that Paul drew a green. Uh, there were already four, there were, I think there might have been five greens on the board at the time he threatened that. So to draw one of the remaining two greens uh, was pretty lucky. I also think Paul missed this. I'm not sure if that was a mistake or not. That's five points. It's okay to allow them a few threes here and there, but I think allowing them a five when you could have stopped it with the colour you drew is probably a mistake. So I don't think it was a double threat, and I don't think David was threatening something even bigger that Paul was stopping. So I think that was a mistake, and that was unlucky. So, yeah, I think you move the yellow down just to make sure that the green will score. In fact, the green's going to score wherever it goes, so the yellow's going to go down for 76. The green's going to score three for 79, and then one of the blues will score three, so it should be 82. Uh, assuming, yeah, so Paul, Paul realises that's the best space for green. There's two blues to come out. I don't think there's any benefit moving out, so it should be a score of 82. A blue here for nothing, and a blue here for three, for a score of 82. So we don't actually see the last place, but I think it flips to the other players go. Yeah. Uh, given the last... Uh, so I don't think... Um, I don't think David's thinking about anything. It's just a blue left. There's, the options are all oh, just going to reduce the score. So this reduces the score and this reduces the score. So I think they're just maybe chatting. Uh, we can't see the chat box. But yeah, if you are watching live, uh, please comment along. If you are watching this later, I believe this is going to be released on Friday off for the MSO webpage um, for the commentary there. Yeah, so 82 for David, um, and we're going to look at the start of the next game. Uh, so what you'll be doing, what you'll notice, they'll generally place them in the centre and the, the opponent will move them to the edge. And what David is trying to do is trying to create um, safe places in the centre to not only block the centre but to stop them joining up. This seems to be a good start for David, five different colours, pretty good. Um, and because they've got a red in the middle, whatever colour they draw, like a blue, so basically because Paul will try to get a blue to the right-hand edge, David will be placing it on the hardest place to get it to the right-hand edge. Um, so that's six different colours out of seven, so that's a pretty good start. You generally don't want to draw lots of the same colour in a row. Or in a collective. If you could spread the colours out the whole game, this is this is why it is a game of bit of luck. Sometimes you're you're hoping to block them and you draw the wrong colour from the bag. If you're playing this live, you're drawing out the bag. Yeah. So this seems like a pretty good start for David. There's seven different colours here. And what David told me he'd like to try and do, he'd like to try and get some pieces and diagonal lines. Um, so in this particular case, there are two pockets in the centre of the board that make it hard for them to move about. So there's a pocket here because the, the white and the yellow are blocking it going to two of the four directions. And there's a pocket here as well. This one's even better because you can't move it to the top edge. So I imagine they'll move the white, yeah, threatening green to this side. And you'll notice uh, at the moment Paul's just scored two points, these two points here. But at some point, Paul will split these blues up, I imagine. And you'll notice David's going for a centre. So David... Because he drew a white, he couldn't really block the green to this edge because the white will join him with this white here. Um, and because he drew a black, he can't fill the gap with the black because the black would go to the right-hand side of the board. 
So you'll notice that Paul's actually not scored that many points here. Um, and David's halfway to doing a line. Now, I, Paul, won't let, Paul won't let this line resolve, I don't think. Um, and you might think green to one of these spots is good, but uh, it just it makes it much easier for David to start cluttering the board up here. So at some point, maybe you move the green down, or you maybe move the reds to here or here to threaten the red to the top. Uh, so if you move the red, yeah, so white, white's fine because you can threaten white to corner as well. Uh, you could move this yellow to here and threaten four, and I think David would let you take it if you did. So if you do yellow to here, it will get you two. Yeah, so David's uh, David's not letting that happen. I like moving the red. Yeah, I, th I think the red or the white, so you can either move the white to the top, uh, he moved the brown down. So he's, he's, he's trying to move the brown down here. Uh, and you'll notice that the brown to here will score three, and then the green to here will score uh, another five for eight points. So I imagine David will block one of those two movements now. The danger of waiting, so basically David could just decide to let him move the first one in and try and block the second one. The danger of waiting is you could draw the wrong colour the second time. Uh, uh, so that's possibly a mistake, because I think uh, this now gives Paul eight points. So yellow was a bad colour to put there. You're trying to I think he was trying to stop the brown going down. Um, there aren't that many good places for yellow apart from on the edge of the board, and David usually doesn't like placing on the edge of the board. Uh, so now Paul's threatening the move we, we spoke about a couple of turns earlier. Uh, Paul might be deciding, yeah, fine, I'll let you block the centre if you just give me these uh, an extra four points for doing so. So you can see that this goes eight. So it doesn't matter what goes in the middle unless it's a yellow or a green. A yellow or green is even worse for David. Um, this is scoring eight. It scores the three here because whatever goes in the middle, that will be three. And then it will score also the five because, again, whatever goes in the middle, this will still be a palindrome. So odd palindromes are easier to score than even ones. Even ones need to be precise, but odd ones need can, anything can go in the middle of an odd one. Right. So apart from this, Paul's not doing it so good. He's got a three here, a three here, and a two here, and then he's got this eight in the middle. Um, he's also got the opportunity for reds down. I think he's reluctant to do that unless. Um, Good things happen. So white to here gets another three. You might think this might be a palindrome of five, but you'd need a red here. <clears throat> and the, the advantage from David's point of view of having this means that uh, Paul's. Yeah, now you've got to be watching here. Now if they move, if if Paul moves the yellow to here, a yellow to here then gets him another palindrome of five for 16 points. So if, uh, if Paul ever gets a yellow to this spot, so this not, this isn't a ridiculous move. It does block you if it doesn't work or if David sees it. But if you split these yellows up at some point and put a yellow in this spot, this will get 16 points. <clears throat> so we'll decide where's... Uh, so David's going to move it there. Yeah, so Paul's threatening this. If David doesn't spot it or David draws a yellow, um, Yellow would be pretty bad. And because of the way it's situated, Paul's got three shots at this. So basically, David can put something here, Paul can move it. David can block it again, Paul can move it. So David, so uh, Paul's got three shots at this. So we'll see what David does. David might just let him have it again. In this game, it's not awful to let people have it. But this is eight points. So either... Now this is this is because I wasn't watching the match. Either David missed this, but he might he might have just ooh what? Why would you not do that? It scores you another five. I mean you're already scoring three. Oh, that was a double threat. Oh, it's apologies. My fault. My fault. My fault. My fault. Um, blue to here also scores five. So because blue to here or yellow to here scores uh, points, um, David can't block both of them. So when David blocks one, Paul will take the other one. That's my fault.
So you can move um, brown to the side safely because then you're threatening this and getting the brown out of the way. Uh, you can also move black to this spot which threatens black to here for five. And the only way to block that is to place one on the edge and that gives you an advantage. So actually I quite like black to this spot. It frees up this section uh, and David has to either let you get five or spend their turn putting one on the edge. Yeah, so I quite like uh, I quite like black to the top here. And Paul's still got the opportunity. You can see that blue to here or yellow to here will gain Paul points. Um, five points in either case. Yeah. Uh, so again, and this is a good threat because there's three blacks. There's quite a few blacks left in the bag. There's four blacks left in the bag. So the odds of David drawing a black to not be able to block this are higher than he normally would be. Like, usually it's one in seven, but now it's like four in... Uh, something like four in 22 or something, uh, which is just a bit higher. Yeah, so I think uh, I think in that case, David thought about that for a long time. I think he would have seen this, and he's decided to let you score. So sometimes you have to let them score. If you sit there blocking everything, you just can't. You just can't block everything. They'll double threat you a lot of the time, and by blocking everything, you're often placing things on the edge of the board, uh, which gives me more flex. Which gives your opponent more flexibility in the centre. Yeah, so yellow's not a great colour because you see all these yellows in the middle. There's not many places you want to do that. So now that Paul's moved this, I imagine they're going to move the yellow down because I think blue up now loses you a point. And the reason Paul hasn't claimed this, this five or this five yet is because he can claim either one. But I think maybe when he's got nothing to do, he'll move this yellow down one. Uh, so what I was talking earlier about having like a three in the centre of the board, that this space and this space, you've got to be careful. There are certain colours you can't place in those spaces. So maybe yellow down, do we think? Or maybe you can move this yellow up. I think I like yellow down, to be honest. Yeah, so you can't put, uh, you can't put a red here because then this red gets you five. And you can't put a black here because then this black gets you five. And you can't put a white here because then this white gets you five. And I know it's losing you six, but obviously that's only because this white's going at the top. Um, so there's a lot of places. So the, um, when you, once you've got like a three here, there's not many colours that can go on the end of this. Green's bad because it goes here. So you can't put a green on this end. You can put a green on this end. Um, so you've got to be very careful when you put your first, uh, whereas chaos when you put your first one here, because there's very, there's quite a few opportunities for your opponent to score. All right, so this is just moving, uh, moving things about a bit. Yeah, so now this space is a bit safer because uh, the other end of it's already been blocked up. Uh, you could move white down. Okay, so this is a this is what's called a double threat. You've got green to here for three, or, or yellow to here for three. Um, from Paul's point of view, I think they'd rather David move yellow to here because that creates two single pockets. I suppose green to here creates two pockets as well. So our estimation when we did two points per space, uh, when David on 61, we thought he'd get 81. So 82 is a pretty good representation of what they'll get. If we're going to do something similar for Paul now to see how it works, we'll wait for Paul to move and see what score he's on. Uh, so he's on 46. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So 36 onto 46 is 82. So uh, currently this game is pretty close. 
Uh, as guides go, that seems to be a pretty sensible one. We'll see how it pans out. Uh, so that's quite a nice move. So basically that brown cuts the biggest section that David, uh, that blah, 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 the biggest section that Paul had into three bits. So this, this single spot, this single spot, and this spot of three, because it was a spot of six. Um, and then David, uh, Paul just scored uh, three points. You can see this row of 16 is pretty high. Yeah, matches, I think David had a row of 16 in the uh, reverse game. Right, so, um, yeah, that's probably the only safe place for a brown. So whether they decided not to put it in one of the many other places because it will score. Yeah, I think nearly everywhere else it would score points. So they've decided to do that. Uh, Paul just gets another three points. So Paul's making three point moves. Uh, again, remember, if it's a two point, if it, at the point we counted it, if it was two points a move, um, they would tie. So three points a move. If Paul can get three points every move, he'll win. You've got the opportunity of Brown to this spot for three. Um, and that's the last yellow. So yellow's at the top of the board, even at the bottom, actually. The bottom is scoring a few points. That's the only safe place for yellow. And they would be able to do that because they had um, a single pocket. And there's still three blues to come, and you can see that uh, all the blues that are already on the board are already connected. Um, so there's going to be a few favourable spots of blues, like a blue in this gap or this gap is pretty good for Paul. Right. That's a spot to put a green that doesn't get three points if you put in any of these four. Um, well, not this one necessarily, but any of the bottom three, they can just move it to this spot for three points. That's two. That's obviously disastrous for greens. That's two. So you're looking for a safe space for green. That's a pretty good one. If that space is safe and that space was safe as well. This space is pretty bad for green because it will score five. Uh, so they're threatening yellow to this space. So that move didn't score any points. So yeah, so they can get yellow to here. And the, the, the double advantage for this, not only does it score three, but you've got a whole column uh, with blue, uh, with three blues still to come. A whole column with two blues in, with three blues still to come. Which means a lot of the blues are going to have to go on this left-hand side of the board. Now there are some safe spots for blues at the bottom, but there's still three to come. Yeah, so, so that's pretty good. I like that move. It scores three, and uh, I think David's got to be careful. So David, literally, if they draw blue, they're restrict. They're very restricted. So what David would be looking to do potentially is put some. Um, so, for example, something here means that's now a safe spot for blue in this column. It's not quite actually. Ignore that. Yeah. So if a blue was, if blue ever went here, you could just move this blue up one to get six points. Okay, so the penultimate green has gone in this gap. Remember, green was pretty bad in quite a lot of these spaces. And that was the other safe space for green. There's two reds to come as well. You've got to be careful. So a red here is disastrous. So I like this move as well. So this is like a defensive move. It doesn't score you anything, but basically it takes away the free space. So this space was a good space to put a red or a blue. This is not a good space to put a red or a blue. 
So you could just move this red across for two. So that basically just takes up one of the awkward spaces. So what's that threatening? Uh, red down. Yeah, red down. So again, there's this column. There's still three blues to come. You can't put a blue here. Uh, that would be awful. You can't really put a blue in this gap. So you've got one, two, three, four spaces. And a red was pretty bad here or here. Or here. And that's the last red. So red's a safe colour now. There's not, you don't need to really worry about red. There's another green to come. There's another white to come. Yeah, so that's a safe space for white. It doesn't score anything. And so David's just, uh, remember it's VP'd. And the VP scale is quite swingy close to a tie. So if you win by five points or so, you actually score quite a, a large number of VPs, given you need 30 to win 20 nil. So you're looking for narrow wins are actually decent. So David's just looking to defend his score of 82. So now he's just for the remaining seven placements, he's just trying to put them in places that um, Paul can't score anything. And there's not many things Paul can move, to be honest. You're looking around, around this base, that, 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 that and that all, are all scoring at least three points. So they can't move anything into this space here. You don't really want to close these blues up unnecessarily because um, that reduces your score. Um, but you might do it depending what's what's to come. This brown scores. So this red doesn't score. You can potentially move the red up. Um, yeah, because this, this column, yes, that seems sensible. This column uh, can fit the last green. So the last green will go in this column at some point. And there's another black to come, so you could move the black up one to threaten black to here. Uh, but what you might do, you might threaten this. Actually, this black to here is actually pretty good. So this black to here is pretty good. They'd have to block this spot, but then you've got these three and these three uh, for blues. So I should actually quite like black to this spot here. That seems pretty good. You're threatening to get five here, and you can see that the score is 82 to 65. Five points gets you to 70, and then there's a lot of blues to come. So I think I like I like black up one spot. I think it's pretty good. If they draw the wrong colour, because basically they can't really block it with a green either. A green... Yeah, so they blocked it with the blue. I mean, they kind of had to put blue there anyway. Um, because blue here, you can't really let... There was three blues to come. You can't really have two blues in here. Um, but now, there's two blues still to come. Blue, blue is pretty bad. It's, it's awful. So I think you have to put one blue in this column and then maybe one blue here. Um, and if you put a blue here, Paul can move this up one for another... Uh, so a blue here scores three, and then a blue up will score another two. Uh, so it's going to be close. It's 14 points in it, but with two blues to come, as well as some other colours, there's... Uh, what else have we got? We've got a green, two blacks, Yeah, so they move this black down so that they can't put blue here. That's quite nice. The blue here will be uh, another eight. Um, so they move the black down, which means they're forcing some of the blues to go here. In fact, you probably have to. You're probably going to be able to force a blue to this spot. Uh, so brown up one gets you two. And again, a blue still isn't safe up here. There's two blues to come. There is a, another black to come. Yeah, so I like brown up, and then if they draw the black, yeah, so if they draw the black, they can put it here, and then black up, and then you've got two blues in three bad spots. And there's a green as well. Now, you've got to be careful with the green. Green scores three here. Doesn't really score anything here, so, yeah. So black up is actually really good for Paul, so black, black up scores him three, and then a green will score uh, anywhere but here. But if you put the green here, then you're putting some blues in two of these spots. So yeah, black up's excellent. I think black up's what you'll do.
You've also got to be careful at some point of Paul moving a blue, this blue one, one up, because then a blue here scores another four, but a green here will score all these. Yeah, so this blue up is excellent, and a blue or green here scores. I think I think Paul's going to slightly win this. Because a blue up here means whatever goes here, whether it's a blue or a green, um, will win the game for... So basically, blue up gets you to 78. And then a blue here... Does it get you 78? You've got three, you lose one, but gain three, yeah, you gain two. Yeah, because you also, yeah, green, yeah, so a green here will also score this. So green has to go up there, and a blue here gets you, uh, it gets you this five back, and four from here gets you nine? Have I miscounted this? Is it going to be a tie? Oh, no, it doesn't. It gets you, it gets you five here. And five here it gets you ten. So the blue gets you five and five is ten. Yeah, because you get the blue here will get you a three and a two. And gets you ten. So we can see that Paul's won by one point. How close was that? How close, how close? I quite liked the move early on where it was a double threat that I missed initially. I thought it was a single threat that David had missed. It hadn't. It was a double threat and there was two different fives that Paul could score. Um, and you can see that this row here of 16 is where Paul got the vast majority of his points. So uh, congratulations. I also think David let Paul get this, whether that was a mistake. I don't think it was. David's a really good player. And um, because it's on the edge, David might have felt he didn't need to block it or shouldn't block it. So uh, that was potentially blockable as well, the black to here to score five. But I can't quite remember exactly what score. Uh, so going into that match, this is what the standings look like. Uh, Paul won by, if we have a look at the VP scale, uh, apologies, trying my best to hear. So Paul won 10.9 to 9.1-ish. Thereabouts, so that was a very slight win, and that gives Paul their third win. So, sorry, uh, that gives Paul their third win. Uh, you can see that Paul gets their third win, and going into round four, Paul, I believe, wasn't at the top of the table because I think one of these two guys, uh, whichever one of these two guys won. But we're going to move now to uh, the end of round five, and we're going to see what the table looks like here, having a bit of an analysing it. So. Paul uh, won their next game 20-0, then they had another narrow win against James Heppel, who was leading going into that round, uh, so James Heppel, and because uh, Paul played a very close game against James, David's 20-0 in round five took David back to the top, so you can see here that Paul is still undefeated, um, I'm not sure anyone else is undefeated at this point in time, so we've got our single winner, so can Paul catch up enough in round six and round seven to catch David up, we will see. Uh, but going into round six, uh, we are going to watch a game between uh, fourth place player James Heppel, who has won the Pentamind uh, twice in the past, and uh, he's a pretty good entry player as James. You can see that uh, he lost narrowly to Paul, just like David did. Um, and James, I believe, in this particular match is paired up against Paco, uh, Paco Garcia de la Banda, my former partner in crime when I was commentating a few years ago. Uh, Paco, this is his favourite ever game. I'm sure he'd be delighted to see that he's once more made it onto stream. So Paco is uh, doing pretty well. He's got four big wins, uh, one heavy loss to, I believe that was to Paul, potentially. Uh, looking at the score, uh, I've rounded a few things up. I've had to do this myself, so I've rounded a few things up. So I can't remember who played who, but it looks like Paco won. Uh, it wouldn't have been against Paul, would it? I'm not sure who it would have been against. Uh, but Paco, yeah, it probably was against Paul, we'll, we'll see. So, uh, Paco's doing pretty well, four big wins, um, one of those against myself. Uh, Paco played me in round five and beat me quite heavily. Um, we're going to join that match between Paco Garcia de Bando, who has also won the Pentamind in the past, many years ago, and James Heppel, Paco, his favourite game, playing James, an all-round lovely guy. So we're going to join that match here. And because things have changed a bit, I need to... move things around a bit, so yeah, because of someone's name being too short or too long or however it's resized it. So we're going to do
do that. We're going to jump into that and see how they do. Packer would love more than anything to win this event once more. Uh, now, uh, I haven't looked ahead at these matches. Uh, I do know the results of the match, um, but I don't know uh, any of the moves. So I'm playing this live with you. So we'll uh, go into this one. So we'll start. Good luck, James. Good luck, Paco. I do know the result, but uh, let's see how they play this. So if you're playing Entropy for the first time, this seems like a, a classic opening. Now, David's changed it slightly, but basically what you're doing is if the first four colours are different, the person playing Chaos puts them in the centre, and the person playing Order moves them all to the edge. So they'll move the blue to one of the edges, probably the right-hand side edge, I imagine. Yeah. And they can either close the blue up or more than likely, because they can't actually stop you closing the blue up, there's no piece they can put here to stop you getting a palindrome, it's safe to start moving other things away. If they ever get a piece in the middle, you just close it up. So, for example, if they put a piece here, you move this one down one. If they put a piece here, you move this one up one and you get your three points. So this is going to be three points. Um, it just You don't need to claim it yet. All right, so... What's happening here is James is tempting Paco. Uh, Paco, from memory, I don't think he'll take it. I think Paco will move either the brown down. Yeah, so he's moving the black up to move, hopefully, both browns to the left-hand side. But Paco generally won't let these stay here. So whatever James draws, unless it's a black one, I imagine he'll put it in one of these two spots. Uh, unless it's black or red, sorry. Yeah, so green, yeah, so putting it here. Stops Packer moving both browns across. So Packer might move one brown across. No, he's not doing that. He's moving the bean down. But he's again threatening to move both browns across. So depending on what James draws, potentially putting one of these two spots, unless it's a black or a red. Yeah, so red can't go there. So red's, red's going to go on the bottom, um, uh, creating a single pocket. Um, so Packer's going to move this, and he's going to threaten to move the other brown across. Now, James might just let him have it. James might put something uh, here, because this spot here is hard to get to the edge. Uh, but James is fighting to stop. You could just move the green down to get two. Or you can move this green to the corner. I don't like this green to the corner because then this move, yeah, blocks everything. So Packer's gone the edge. Uh, this is still a good spot to put things now. I think it's a, it's a decent spot to put a red now. Uh, yeah, but they drew a brown, so they couldn't stop this. So Packer's probably going to move the brown to the edge. And at some point, they can move this brown here to get three points and threaten the brown into the gap. So James potentially, yeah, so they're stopping, they were stopping Packer moving the brown to here. So this is quite nice. This is quite nice. Um, black into the gap. That's what are you looking at? So you could just move the white to the bottom, white to the top, same thing. Uh, red to the bottom. So, yeah, so the easiest way to block the black to this spot is to put something here, because then it takes two moves to get out. Because you can see when you're just blocking it and blocking it and blocking it here, people are moving them into places at score. So you put a red here, Packer moved it and scored some points. In theory, you could put uh, a green here, and Packer can move it and score some points. Uh, so if you really want to block it, you put it in the gap. So this yellow, if you really wanted to block this, you put it in the gap. They've got the opportunity, potentially, of moving the yellow down. To go into here. Uh, I don't think Packer's in a great position here because I think the centre is getting a bit clogged up. Uh, Packer's probably looking for the best move to kind of free things up a bit. Yellow to here is pretty bad actually because James can, uh, wherever James, yeah, so this is bad because I think in theory they can either put something here to stop you joining these yellows up, yeah, or continue to block that. So uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Paco just move the yellow out of the way instead of, yeah, he's moved the blue. So then when he moves the yellow, yeah, so when he moves the yellow now, he's also got this yellow in the bottom. So James has possibly put one in this gap. Yeah, so James has got his line. So this this is the gap James is looking to fill now. James is probably going to let Paco get this yellow to here and try and block these two spaces here, I imagine. But again, it's hard to say. So... Uh, James is just trying to reduce Paco's score. So that's um, 
like a defensive move. I suppose you're just you're choosing. Yeah, you're basically saying whatever happens, you're not going to get that that yellow in the gap. Yeah, so uh, I'm not sure I'm a fan of James's moves there. Basically, Paco was threatening to move the black down to threaten the black here for five. And James put a red in the place. Well, that gives you what's called a double threat. So uh, red to here gets you three reds in a row, uh, if you want it. Uh, the other possibility is Paco. I mean, it's already scoring five. If you move the red to here, it's got you two more. The other possibility is I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised to see Paco moving the brown to this space. Yeah, okay, so that's also a double threat. So basically, Paco is threatening uh, brown to here for another four and black to here for another five. So James stops the highest scoring one. So brown to here scores Paco another four. Paco's also got this as an opportunity, although you don't have to take it. It only gains you two points and it does block up this column. Paco's managed to free, free up this column that was starting to get blocked. Uh, so I think you can move brown to here, potentially. Uh, it scores you five. Okay. Oh, this is this is nice, actually, because it's, it increases the score on this row to six from five, and brown to here scores you another eight. So James has to block this brown down. And then, if you want to, you can move the brown to here. Yeah, so J James couldn't block that. Paco's going to get another eight. So uh, Paco is back in it, looking uh, much better than he was a few turns ago. And that was just one of those situations where James was pretty unlucky, actually. There was only two browns left in the bag. <clears throat> um, so what you'd like to do, ideally, is, is get a brown here. But you're realistically not going to be able to do that. So brown to this spot, threatening a brown down. Um, and what you're hoping is when they try to block you, they pull out a brown so they can't because this will get you another, I think it's another, it's another eight, I think it is. Um, I wonder what Paco's trying to do. Trying to move the white to these. So you could just move the black to the top, yeah. Trying to move the white to join these whites. Yeah, so James has blocked it. Uh, so this, the left-hand side of the board is pretty congested, and what that means is that it doesn't. It, it gives James a lot of opportunities when he draws a colour he doesn't really want on the right-hand side of the board to block it in one of these little pockets. So uh, if you can, if I can advise you, if your opponent isn't as skilled as some of the people watching today, if they're not going to go all out of their way to get like a cross, this is what you you've got here. You've got a line going down and a line going across. Yeah, so Paco's threatening it. He's going to take a gamble, see what James draws. James will probably just place it here. But um, Paco's got two shots at this. So Paco can move this down, and he gets another shot. So if James draws another brown, yeah. So uh, in theory, you can move this green across. That seems sensible. Okay, black black across is fine. Oh, you're threatening white up here. <clears throat> and it's a bit of a better threat, because with three whites in the bag... Uh, a white up to this spot is harder to block than a brown down to here was. Yeah, so you drew a white, they couldn't block it, so Packer can go to here to score five. Uh, but what James did do is he blocked the green to this spot. All right, so this brown is sort of dead. There's not many good things uh, to do with it. You could just move, uh, so yeah, so red down now. Red down for three. Um, that's my gut reaction anyway. Red down for three, and at some point you probably want to move this brown into another place. Now, uh, spaces that aren't bad for the brown, if the brown was somewhere like one of these two spaces, you're threatening a palindrome of five with one of the browns on the edge. Uh, okay, so Paco's choosing not to clog the centre. Paco could have got three points. They're just freeing some space up a bit. And in theory, white to this spot gets another three. So James couldn't block that. I imagine now, because Paco's did the green the last turn, they'll probably do white this turn. Um, 
They've already got, so uh, weirdly, actually, they've got quite a nice move here. They can move the white, so uh, Packer can move white to uh, B5, which gains one point, but it also means this brown has got quite a nice place it can go. You can see this row has already got two browns and two whites on it. So I think if you move a white to this spot, um, yeah, and then if, if uh, James blocks the brown across, you can just move this other white in and you've just freed up your space. So you can see what Paco's done. This column was the one that was full and Paco's in a few moves has just moved everything across one in a way that scored in points. Uh, so that move of green to the corner actually has turned out quite well. You'll notice that although Paco can move some of the vertical lines, Paco's not going to really touch this horizontal line because this horizontal line score you eight. Um, and given the winning score is in the 80s, so let's assume that the winning score is 84, you've got 14 rows and columns, which means if you score six per row and column, that's 84. So any row that scores more than six is above average. You're doing pretty well. Any row that's going less than six could be improved upon. Now, obviously, you won't score six in every row. You'll score some more, some less. Uh, James is thinking about what, he, what they're doing. You don't, it's, sad, it's sad that we can see the way this, this, uh, the replay function in this software works. If you're playing the game live, you can see what piece your opponent has. And while they're thinking about what to do with it, you can think about what you're doing given the piece they've got. In the replay, that's a bit harder for me. So I apologize if I'm reacting um, faster than I want. So, yeah, so Packer's got two choices. I think that's a better choice. You're also threatening moving this white out of the way. And remember, if you can get like a green or a yellow on the other end of this, you'll score some points. Uh, so Packer's threatening the white to this spot. Seems pretty good. And then if that gets blocked, you can just move the whites to that spot. This is a decent, um, okay, so Paco is threatening blue down, we think. Yeah, so blue down threatens white across or red down. Uh, so James can, I'm going to say waste a turn. Generally, you want, when, you play, when you're playing as Kess, you want to be putting things in ways that block your opponent's movement. Yeah, so James couldn't block this, so I imagine Paco will move blue down. And there's a lot of, lot of threats for little, uh, a little three, three or three points or so. I imagine Paco's next move, if this, if, if there's no pieces put there, is blue to here, because then red to here will get you four. The other possibility is uh, white to B6. Uh, if you are uh, confused with my terminology, basically A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so... Uh, Yeah, so green to here, or blue to here, I guess. I, I don't like this. I, I think I would, when the green was put here, I think I would have moved white across first. Yeah, so in theory, yeah, I'm, I, maybe I'd have moved white across first. I don't know. Uh, clearly, Paco beat me quite heavily. It was my biggest loss of the day. Spoiler warning. <clears throat> Right, so how's it looking? So you could just tidy things up a bit. You could do white to here for two, then green to here for two. And then you threaten red down, so James has to block it. Uh, you're threatening yellow to this spot, I believe. Yeah, I think James has done a very good job at blocking. If we just do an estimation of the score, we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we think Packer's score is going to be around the 70 point mark, maybe low 70s. And I think James has done a very good job of uh, restricting Packer's scoring opportunities. So that scores three. Um, Packer will be looking for three points a move if you can get that between now and the end of the game. And I'm sure if you are watching Packer after the fact, I'm sure you can tell me all the things I'm saying wrong. Uh, so threatening green to the top and again you're looking to see what's coming out I think uh, yeah so you could move yeah so that's good so you, you're threatening yellow to this spot now 
you're looking, I think there's quite a balance of colours coming out to be honest. There's one red to come, one yellow to come, one green to come, one black to come. There's the black. One brown to come. I think James has been pretty lucky actually with the tiles he's drawn. So Packer could move this yellow to here to threaten black up. Although that, that's the last black, I think. Yeah, so you can't really threaten that because it's easy to block. Uh, black across will score. So James is probably going to put one here, depending on what they draw. You could, yeah, so I like that. So basically, black to here threatens a palindrome of five. Yellow down will get you five. Um, so black to here was a decent move for Packer. So James has pre-blocked that. And James has put the green here, knowing Packer can score three points for it. So Packer can just move the green up now for three. Uh, he's thinking about what's coming out. What is the left? There is another yellow, uh, which James can, oh, James can't put the yellow here. Yeah, so wherever the yellow goes, it's going to score points. If you move the green up, the yellow will score at least three. So I like green up, to be honest, but Packer's going to take some time. So there's a few pieces left. There's a blue to come. So blue is safe here for James. I'm not sure what Packer can do to increase that. In theory, you can move the brown down. If you know the blue's coming next turn, you can move the brown down, and then the blue will score f um, two here. So that gains you one point. Not great. Uh, but I think green up as well, because it means blue here will also score. So basically, you have to put the blue here to score nothing. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, da -da -da. We've got one blue, one yellow, and one brown. Well, the brown is probably going up here. So I think it's probably going to go something like blue, brown, yellow. So Paco gets 72, unless he can wangle a few extra points at the end. At the end. Yeah, so blue. I think you have to move the white up to stop the yellow scoring. Uh, no, the yellow scores three either way, doesn't it? Yeah, so yellow scores three either way. Uh, so what Paco's hoping for is yellow to here if the brown's the last tile. So James, if James has got the yellow, he has to kind of put it here. Because otherwise yellow to this spot gets Paco five. So I think if James has drawn the brown, it goes here. And the yellow, it goes here. Uh, yeah, that's irrelevant. You just you, you needed to put whatever you drew. Yeah, in that you need to put whatever you drew in that spot. I think. Yeah, and then the last tile is a yellow. Uh, I don't think Packer's going to move anything. So Packer's final score should be seventy-two. I think that is a pretty you know. So basically, that what they said in the guide I got was seventy-five points is good. Uh, anything over hundred is fantastic. So that seems sensible. I would like to say in expert circles, you need to be scoring in the 80s at least <clears throat> to have a decent shot at thinking you can defend it. So I think uh, 72 would be a total, because uh, against Paco, I scored 80-odd. I, I can't remember the exact score I got, but against Paco, I scored 80-odd. So I think um, I would be happy if I was James chasing a score of 72. I think James did a very good job near the start of blocking everything up. And I don't think he missed anything. I think the times that he couldn't block Paco, he was unlucky. He drew the wrong colour. And one of those times, there was only two browns left. So James is a fast player, so this might go fast. So I will do my best to try and keep up. Uh... So I wonder if you move the green, yeah, so he's just moving things out of the way. At some point you might move the green to here or the yellow down. Apology, I think green to here might be decent at some point. Yeah, and black to here means a green to here scores quite a lot. So you probably try threatening the green first, and if the green threat wins, then black to here also scores a lot. Uh, 
All right, so I think what you'll be looking for is James. It's uh, you don't really want to move the green to this edge or the blue to one of the top and bottom edges. You probably want to move the blue to here to threaten blue across. I mean, apologies, you move it down one maybe, or green to here to threaten the green across. Okay, so they've done that to maybe just move the yellow out of the way or something like that. Yeah, actually, this is quite nice. Basically, what James is looking to do is to move the yellow out of the way. And then green to here threatens both green to this edge and blue to that edge. Packer will stop that. Um, but if he doesn't, I mean, he can stop that by just placing one above the yellow, I think. Uh, but I, what I think I would do is potentially, depending on what colour he's drawn, you could place one above the green. So... Green to here or yellow to top? Oh, that's quite nice. Yeah, you're threatening blue to here. So Paco either has to let you have five or spend their turn blocking these two, and then your centre of the board is better. So Paco is guaranteed to block it. That takes two moves to get out. James isn't going to bother. And now James, again, Paco's got to block this one. And James, you'll notice the centre of James's board at this stage in the game is much better. So uh, I was talking to Dave Jameson about this. Do you bother... Do you bother... Uh, blocking by placing at the edge and he says generally no uh, depending on how many obviously it depends on how many points it's worth and he says generally no uh, so that didn't gain Paco uh, sorry that didn't gain James anything the, the blue was scoring three anyway but because it, now it's scoring three at the edge of the board it's pretty good and we see before that if you've ever got a three that you've got to, your opponent's got to be very careful especially a three in the middle of the board you've got to be very very careful about putting one on the edge of it for example, you can't put a red here because you just bring this red across. Yeah, so um, Paco's a much better player than myself. Uh, I generally wouldn't put the black there. I mean, I don't know why you put the black there. Why wouldn't you put the black somewhere like here? Uh, you're, stop, you're stopping it getting to the right inside edge. So I understand the brown. The brown is to stop the black coming to here. Um, Yeah, so brown down or black up will get uh, James three. So uh, they've stopped the black up. I imagine James will move the brown to the bottom. Oh, they're threatening. First of all, they're threatening yellow to here. Yeah, so I think they go yellow to this spot for four. A move that scores four points is pretty good. You generally don't want to block the middle, but this isn't the middle. This is towards the top. So I think yellow to here is good. And, and you've got to watch it. The, the blue to the bottom row is still good as well. That's been open for a while now. Uh, so blue to the bottom row. Yeah, so I, I, like, I like blue to the bottom here. And then in theory, at some point, you threaten brown to here to go down. And you can see James has got a row here that, again, if ever a red is placed in this row, you plonk it in this gap. All right, so I, I wonder if uh, James threatens the brown here. James, I've seen James play this before. He does push his luck. He does threaten these high-scoring things. And Paco... Again, what you could have done is you could have put a white here and then you move out of the way and then you do it again. And if you continue to do that, you kind of start blocking it, blocking things up. But you give yourself the chance of an unlucky draw. Um, so that one I don't mind Packer doing because if you're unlucky here, you lose eight points. If you've got a brown in this spot, it would be 14 instead of six. Um, so I wonder if you're going to move brown to here next. Uh, the other possibility is, once you've moved the brown out of the way, is yellow down, because then red to here scores five. Yeah, so they're stopping the moving the brown across. They're also stopping the splitting the yellows. So splitting this yellow, what I mean by that is uh, when you've got a two and you move it to a three, that's how I define splitting yellow. It's probably not the correct terminology for it, but splitting the yellows would gain you a point, but it also threatens red across, and so... Um, Paco has done it in such a way that James couldn't split the others. I imagine whatever's drawn goes here. 
because again black to here is pretty is pretty good and you also then get to split the yellows again if you want to again there are some colors you probably don't want to put here you probably don't want to put a blue there because blue to here gets six And a yellow is looking dangerous. A yellow is pretty bad as well because if a yellow goes there, you have what's called a double threat. You can move black to here, which threatens three blacks or three yellows. You could still do this. I think black to here with a white. So if you move black to this spot, you're threatening three blacks. Yeah, that's exactly what James has done. Or white up one to get four. So Paco can't block, block, block both. They're both worth four points. So Paco has to decide if, he, if he's drawn a flexible colour, such as a... Uh, I don't know what colour is flexible, to be honest. Like, if he's drawing a yellow, he puts the yellow here. Actually, yellow down. He has to block one of them. I think, in theory, you'd like to block this one, because yellow down scores you five, because it goes uh, white, yellow, something, yellow, white. Yeah, so yellow down scores five, threatens red across. So you have to block the red. And you've still got the black to do. So I think yellow down is a pretty good move from James. Yeah, yellow down. James has seen it. I think Paco, sh I don't know how you'd have done it. I don't know what you'd have done because he drew a white. A white's a really bad colour to block that move. But you could have put the white at the bottom here. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I think Paco was unlucky there to draw exactly a white. Because a white doesn't do much here. Or it wouldn't have done much here. So James can move. Uh, I like, I prefer red in to the gap. Because uh, that frees up this side of the board a bit. <laughs> Apologies, it was Paco's move. I wonder why Paco didn't put the red here. Oh, I guess he's uh, I guess he's trying to just keep the board segregated. Um So this is a pop so you know when I said that you, you can spend a few turns blocking, this is one of those turns where you have to spend three turns blocking. So if you really need to block this move, you have to put something there, they move it out of the way, you have to put something there, they move it out of the way, and then you have to put something there. So you need to draw three colours in a row, you don't block it. So yeah, white doesn't really block this move. Because uh white would give them three anyway. So only this 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 gains one more point than putting the white there. But if you put the white there and give them three instead of four. They can then do something more positive elsewhere. Uh, so I think James is in a good spot. If we do a bit of a calculation, 2, 2 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 8, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 24, 16, 40. So James is looking to score in the mid 80s, I think, at the moment. Um, after this move, he's uh, got 20 spaces left for 40 points, which will give him a score, an estimated score of about 83. Um, uh, welcome if you're watching live on Twitch. This is a recording for a later date. Um, <laughs> this is a, a live recording of the World Championships that happened last weekend. So I'm commentating on a few matches. This is a match, if you're watching, between... Um, James Heppel, who is currently in fourth place, and Paco, who just beat me, who's currently in sixth place. With two matches to go. We're fighting for some medals. Um, so, hi, Amy. How you doing? Uh, Paco was the guy I commentated with two years ago. And James is just an all-round nice guy. Always a pleasure to talk to and always give me advice on games I'm not very good at. So, thanks, James. Uh, but yeah, so so that was a that didn't score anything. Threat, uh, threatening that, yeah. So Paco does this a lot more than other players I've seen. They block on the edge a lot more, um, which means you're less likely to get unlucky because obviously if they've got a high scoring uh, spot on the edge. You're less likely to be unlucky because it takes them two turns to move out of the way. So it's, it's once you've blocked, it's blocked. Not always, but 
if it takes them two turns to move something out of the way, you advance, you 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 ahead because they're wasting two moves to do that. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Paco based on previous performance if they draw the right color to place it here in a5 to stop the blue coming down one. Uh, if the blue does go down one, then this whole row you can't put a brown in because a brown to here scores quite a lot. So I imagine James brings the blue down one here. Yeah, and now what? What? Uh, I, I mean, Packer's too good a player just to casually place a brown here. But at some point, James could potentially even move this brown up. There's three browns to come in. Uh, I don't know how many spaces: two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Three browns to come in sixteen spaces. So normally it's a one in seven chance that something comes out, but now it's about a one in five and a half. So in theory, James could move this up. And Packer can't block the brown to here with a brown or a blue. Uh, it was a better move before this blue came out, but uh, what I'm talking about is... Yeah, that's just a safe space for blue. And uh, what Packer's done is they've split this section of what was three spaces into two singles. There's no way James can move this to get the blue to score. Um because this blue's already scoring, so moving the blue up to kind of make a three here doesn't really work. I quite like, I don't know whether this is a good move or not, I quite like moving the brown up one space. The other possibility is uh, James has moved the black. The other possibility is you've also got yellow to here to score point, uh, to score three points, sorry. Yeah, so. Uh, you could move the white into this gap because then white down at the top um, scores you five. So I, I don't mind that. I think white to this gap isn't bad. And then Packer has to block this and then you move yellow up. So I think white to here seems pretty good. You're losing two points, but you'll be gaining three points. Packer's going to waste a turn placing one here. And remember, you've got two shots. There's one white left, so I don't think I don't think uh, depending on what Paco draws. I mean, if they draw like a green or a black, you can't block it. Or a uh, yeah, so James could just move white down for five. That seems the best move available. They could just move yellow up. There's not many. There's not too many colours that can Paco can block this with safely. Like a red is one. Uh, the disadvantage in doing this is you've now got two singles here. Um, and I think James has had a slight advantage here in that there's still three greens to come. And I think when at the end of Paco's turn as order, there was a nice even spread of things that James was pulling out of the bag. In this particular case, Paco's got three greens to come. So your opportunities here, you could just move the reds to the end to score two. I think that's better than moving the yellow up. Although the yellow up scores you more points, reds to the end to score you two keeps your flexibility. So it depends how James sees it. So James is just going to score the points. I mean, James is just looking to win the match, I think. You need to beat 72. You've got 15 points left to get. I think you'll do it with three greens to come. I think it will be very hard for the greens that come out not to score you points. Um... So blue across one seems sensible. Uh, but I, 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 I think I prefer red across actually. I, I'm going to I, I want to advocate red to here. Yeah. Um, so there's still three greens to come. Uh, it's almost a one in three prospect for the greens. There's how many's left? There's 11 left and three greens. So it's roughly just under one in three for a green to come out. Uh, so in theory, James might just be scoring points now. So for example, Brown to here scores you two. Uh, yeah, that's a good space for yellow. Uh, you'll notice that Packer's got three, four single dots to place things that hopefully won't score. So for example, a green here doesn't score James anything. A green here doesn't score James anything. James really needs to 
<clears throat> um, move things around so that the greens will score, knowing three of them are coming out. James has got the two points to the brown, but he's created another single gap. So what I think you would do in this situation is you'd move to the red to threaten the red to here. So you'd move the red either up or across. Because there's three greens to come, you can't block it very easily. So I, I probably would have moved it up one because you want to keep the column free for greens. I think now a green here is safe. Uh, but if Paco is drawn to green, yes, yeah, so a green here is safe. So I, a green here and or here is safe. So I think you can move... Yeah, this isn't great from James, I think. Oh, hang on. Yeah, red red up's pretty good, actually. A red to this spot's pretty good because you're threatening green to here for five. And there's two greens left to come. So you try to maximise the chance that a green is good for you. Yeah, so Paco couldn't block that. I, I actually don't like the place that Paco put the green the previous turn. I prefer Paco should have put the green one higher. Uh, otherwise, because this was this was clearly going to happen. Uh, so Paco's put the black there to stop the green down for two. Now Paco's got a three. Uh, James has got three points. Is there a way for Paco to deny James three points? Was well, two greens left? That scores. That scores. That scores. That scores. So the greens have to go on the top row. There are also two browns left. If the greens are going the top row, is there any way to put browns so they don't score? There isn't. So basically, a brown here doesn't score, but a brown or a green in any of these spots will score James points. So there's two greens, two browns, a white and a blue. Uh, two greens, two browns, a white and a and two yellows. I'm miscounting one of them. Oh, there's only one green left. Yeah, I'm miscounting one of them. There's two yellows as well. So this is a good spot for quite a lot of spaces, but I think there's just too many spots where James is going to score, incidentally, two or three points. James is also going to benefit from the fact there's two yellows left. Uh, that seems weird. Why has he done that? There'll be a reason for that. I don't like that because I think now here a yellow is now safe, which it wasn't before. And there's two yellows to come, so I don't like that. Maybe we'll see why that works in a second. Right, the point difference is one point. It looks like James is going to win, but it's uh, because it's victory pointed, it's all about how much he wins by. So obviously a one-point win gets you just a, a slight win, but a ten-point win gets you uh, quite a lot more. A ten-point win wins you 16, uh, 16 and a bit to four to three and a bit. So you're trying to maximise the points you get every time, always. And even if you're going first as an order and you're in the you know and you're in the high nineties, you want to keep going. So it tells me how long the next move is, and I think Paco is thinking for a minute and a half on this move. So this is the stage of the game, especially if you've managed your time bank quite well. They played the start of this game very fast. Where you sit there and you count, uh, you might as well use your time bank and you count for all the different possibilities. So there's two yellows to come, but there are two safe spots for the yellow. There was a green to come. There is... If you use these as the safe safe spots for yellow, there's no really safe spot for the green. So that means James is going to win. Uh, there's also two browns to come. Yeah, so there's there's the there's the green. Uh, I think realistically you were you can't put a green here or here. I think you're looking to put the yellows at the top. 
and there's two yellows, two browns. So, ah, weirdly, I think I can see what happened last time now. I so yellow goes there. A brown is safe here. And then there's another brown. So the other brown is going to score you. You have to put the other brown here because you can't have three yellows. Yeah, I don't know why I moved the blue the other way. I don't know why I did this. I I, I don't understand that move. Um, now a brown will score... Uh, yellow will score here now. So this is the safe spot for yellow. And then if it goes brown, brown. This is pretty good, actually, because what will happen now, uh, depending on the order they draw them in, what you don't want to do. Basically, if they draw a yellow now, you put it here, and then you move this yellow across one, and brown scores you... Uh, I oh, know it loses you the five. It loses you this five. So yellow to here loses you, but gains you. It might gain you enough to make it matter. I wonder if yellow to here. We'll see what they draw. Yeah, so I wonder if yellow to here. I haven't worked it out actually. So yellow to here loses you nine and gains you one, two. I don't think it matters actually. I don't think it matters. I think you should probably leave it, yeah. So there goes the final score. It was 79 to 72. What is a low scoring game? Uh, James uh, Paco restricted James to 79, which usually would be pretty good, but I think James restricted Paco to 72, which is even better, um, which takes us to so going into that match. The standings were here. James was fourth, Paco is sixth. Uh, that win puts James in second place. The What was a seven-point win gives you 15 victory points, 15 point and a bit victory points. So Paco drops down to eighth place. Now, with one round to go, we estimated that the start, a score of around just over 100 would be what's needed for the medals. And the last match features David Jameson's playing James Heppel. Uh, Paul, I believe, played Elaine Decker. Kuno played Andres Kuss. Now, Andres uh, lost match five narrowly to Paul Kolk. Uh, we saw Paul. Paul is still undefeated, but residing in third because some of their victories haven't been by enough. Uh, that's the way victory points work. So if it was done by wins, Paul would be in pole position. But victory points means he's in third place. So Paul needs another win, we think, in the last match to guarantee himself a medal, as does David and James. David and James are playing each other. So that is effectively David's playing James probably for the gold medal match but if that's tight then the winner of Paul uh, or Elaine can steal that but uh, for our final match we're going to concentrate on uh, Kuno versus Andres they're both Estonian Andres needs a top three finish to improve his pentamine standings Pot going into this I believe Andres was something like third or fourth in the pentamine standings overall um, so Andres needs a win here and needs to get about 100, just over 100 points and needs something like a seven point win to get a medal and improve their pantomime standings. If results go excellently well, technically, mathematically, he could still win gold. That's probably unlikely, but we are going to join uh, that match for our final match of this stream. So here we do. Kwa Kwa is Kuno and Fantoons uh, is Andres Kusk, Fantunes, if you are a bridge aficionado, Fantunes was the name. Uh, I'm not sure if you regret that now. Fantunes was the name of an Italian pair regarded as the world's best pair, and then they got caught out for cheating. They were cheaters, so I'm not sure Andres can change that name, but he's a bridge player as well. He's a pretty good bridge player from what I hear. Um, so that is where Fantunes comes from. Qua Qua, I don't know. It might mean something Estonian, uh, but Fantunes is based on two Italian bridge players. So we're going to join this match. Uh, the winner of this match possibly makes a medal position. Andres needs a medal position to improve their pentamind. So we'll see uh, whether they can get that going into this match. Some of the other matches were slightly one-sided, so we're going to focus on this one and see uh, how it goes. So here we go. We're off to the start, off to the races. This is our last match of the stream, so I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and again, uh, I believe... I believe they took two minutes to do this, so I think they sat down and uh, we're going to wait two minutes. So what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to try and skip this move. 
yeah, okay, that can do that. And then here we go. We're back. We're back playing live. That was a two-minute move. <laughs> uh, and in this particular case, uh, Kuno is playing order. So Kuno is playing order. Kuno is trying to make patterns. Uh, apologies, that's my fault. Uh, Andres is trying to make patterns. And Kuno is trying to stop them. So this is a, a, a common start. You're trying to create a column or a row across the middle. And Andres has already got three points. I think there's an interesting argument to say whether you, because there was it was a black one. Uh, you had two black ones on the edge, and you join them up to make three points. Uh, whether you join them up so one's in the corner, whether you join them up so on the row, I actually don't mind either way, to be honest. I'm not sure there's a clear edge. It might depend on certain situations, but I imagine you move the blue to the corner here for another three. You could move the green to this edge. Yeah, that's another possible move. The green to the edge. Uh, you're trying to move the other green to the edge, and yeah, they've just stopped it. They've just out and out stopped it. So maybe it's something I'm doing wrong because I wouldn't make that move. Um, so realistically, uh, yeah, I, I quite like that actually. Uh, realistically, you can move the green down to the bottom, which was threatening green to here. And if that was blocked, you could have gone green, green. So block, block. And because they put the yellow here the previous turn, putting another piece here is hard to get out of the way now, so that's quite a nice move. Uh, so I assume they move the green across now, they do. And uh, at some point, probably white to top, so that you can move the white across. Uh, you could also move green across to threaten a green to here. I prefer, yeah, I prefer why. I think you want to wait until slightly later on to threaten that. Um, and when I say threaten, basically, if you move the green to here, you're trying to get a green here, which will score you um, another three points. However, it can't be blocked to the black. So you could move green up, and if it gets blocked this way, you just put the green to the side. There's the possibilities to move the red to the top. Because it's uh, sorry, not the red, the yellow. So we'll see what happens here. Yeah, the, the threatening green to this space. It's only three points. It might look like it's more because of all, how, how the things uh, have lined up. But because this one doesn't match this one, it's only going to be this three here. Uh, they couldn't block it because they drew a black one, so they, they get the green out of the way. Uh, what they'll be looking to do is to try and get the black on the top row. So I imagine that Kuno will be trying to block that by placing uh, probably in this spot here if they can. But we'll see. It depends again. Depends what colour they've got. They decide to do that. You could move the red to the side to threaten the black up. That's not ridiculous. The other possibility is you try and move, start to move the reds to the top row. Yeah. So you're keeping those two there. You're trying to move the red to the top row, or if that gets blocked, you move this red to the bottom and then threaten this red to the bottom. You'd prefer to move it to the top because what you don't want to do is have a single space here. Apologies, missed that. Missed that. That gets you five. Now, uh, potentially Kuno could have let that happen because this is blocking the board. Basically, if you can get one here, which isn't easy to do. It takes a couple of turns to start uh, putting enough stuff there that it starts to block it. But if you can put one here, you cut, you cut off the top and the bottom half of the board. So from Andres, that just uh, tidies things up again. It doesn't score you any points or threaten anything. It just tidies things up, and you might want to start doing that. Yeah, so I like that, because basically white to here scores six. Yeah, so they still have to block this one, potentially. So we'll see what they do. That was an instant move of the blue out of the way. Yeah, so white, you could do white to here. Uh, they put a red, yeah, and then you've got red to here, or red to here. I think red to here is better. So 
So, uh, Argus is on 29 points. Uh, they need a decent win to get themselves a medal, and more importantly from them, they, they care more about the pentamine, the overall championships of the events. Um, as of time of filming, they are, I believe, a very close third. They're, very, they're fighting out for second place, but at the time, they needed a score to improve their ranking, so they needed a decent score. Did they get it? We're, well, that's what we're here to see. Yeah, so I can't, So this is one of those situations where you've got um, a three in the middle of the board and basically there are certain places you can't, there's certain things you can't put on the end. So you can't put a yellow here, you can't put a brown or a red here. Um, so it's not easy to block, there's only certain colours of block. You don't want to block it with a black either because obviously it scores you three. So something like a green, one of the ends would be fine. Uh, you can move... Okay, so they move the brown across. So yeah, they're, tr they're trying to move this yellow out of the way. So what Kuno will be looking to do is block this spot. They couldn't block, definitely couldn't block it with a white. Uh, so yellow down, and then what they really want to do is to stop this threat. So they want to probably block this spot or this spot because a white to here. If if they draw the wrong colour, that could be disastrous because that could be a huge score. So I think what Kuno will be looking, depending on the colour they've drawn, is to block. One of these spaces. Uh, okay, so I wonder if you just chance moving the white across here. There's only one white left, but you can't really block it uh, efficiently with a red. Uh, okay, I'm going to do this first. Yes, yeah, so this is actually excellent. So basically, if Kuna doesn't block this column, white to here is a th double threat. It's a white to the top or white down. So. Kuno is a good player. Uh, his dad, Paul, is the undefeated player in the event. Um, so you could move the yellow down to the bottom here. Okay, they've, moved, they've, moved, they've not gone for the double threat. But uh, that was... Uh, well, I'll, I'll just go over that again if you're not watching. Basically, imagine this... Yeah, it's, I mean, it's going to be too late now. But imagine the yellow and the green went here. White to this spot threatens two different things. You threaten this five here with a white. Or this, what would be 22 here with a white. Uh, it's too late now, um, but that's quite nice. So you move them, you, you split the red, and then you threaten the white in the gap. Um, so they block it with the black. Uh, you can move the green down potentially. You know, green down, yellow down. You might not want to do that because green down starts blocking this bottom column up. So is there a better move they can make? Not sure there is, to be honest. In terms of scoring points, there isn't really a move that scores points. So you, you can do blue to here, but that's pretty bad because you start blocking this bit up now too. Uh, blue to here scores you two. Yeah, that's quite nice. So I think Kuno's doing a good job of trying to block up the border. You've 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 got the horizontal row. You've almost got the vertical column. You want that cross. So this cross is what you really want. And basically, if you've got a cross, you can. You've got four areas of the cross to place um, tiles in that you don't want or counters in that you don't want. So obviously, a green is awful on the right hand side of the board, but it's very good in this top left pocket. And if you're going to block a pocket of three like that, you generally want to pick the middle one because then you create two singles. And singles are good because if you put a piece there, they can't move it out of the way straight away. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you can see this. They could, if they wanted to, uh, Andres could move a green to this spot for five. Uh, it doesn't actually gain them five. It only gains them two because they're losing this three points to get this five. So they might not do that. Uh, and there's a lot of browns left. There's still four browns left. So potentially this is a good threat to do. Yeah, so they could just move the brown um, in this gap. It's probably a bit of a wet move. Yeah, they're going to threaten brown down. Again, there's still four browns in the bag. Can they block this move? Well, they can't block it with a black because you get black here. They can't block it with a yellow because that just gives you lots of points. 
realistically, yeah, so the green, yeah, I think that's sensible. I think you just got to let them have that. Uh, and remember, they've still got this threat of a green to B2. It only gains you two points. Oh, they're going to threaten, yeah, they're going to threaten this green to B2 then. Potentially. They were also threatening yellow down. So green to here, gain to three. If you put the green here, you gain to five. Well, you might not want to do that because this is your best uh, mobility. Uh, but you also were threatening yellow down to this spot because then it would go yellow something, yellow something, yellow. Uh, and that would gain from two points. You can see this column's worth two. That would have gained six. So I like that move. I didn't spot it. I liked it though. You've got to be careful. That was a weird move, actually. I think that might be an error because you've got brown to here for four. Now, that's not great for Andres. It scores in points. So beyond the point scoring, you now look at this section here. This section was an open section, and now it's three singles. And if you look at Kuno, it's an excellent position now. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine single spaces. So although uh, Andres has got 12 spaces left, so in theory they're going to get 80, about 87, we think. Um, because a lot of these spaces are single spaces, there's going to be a lot of these spaces that Kuno is able to put things in that don't score Andres points. And not only don't score points, but that he can't move the tile that was placed there to score points because he's got no flexibility. So uh, Andres is doing pretty well. I mean, 87 is a decent score, actually, against someone of Kuno's skill if 87 is what they get, but they might not get as high as 87 because um, of how how like segregated everything is. There's still two browns to come, but you'll think that the left-hand side of the board here, these two spaces especially, are good for browns. <clears throat> there's two reds to come as well. Reds, uh, again, there's a space here for a red, space here for a red. Andre, ah, now this is a double threat, so brown to here, Although you lose the four points you had, you're threatening to gain five or gain four back. So potentially you've got either, either or. So uh, you probably move the brown down and then it gives you some mobility here. So it actually didn't increase Andres' score by more, by, it only increased the score by a point. Um, they're now threatening yellow to here. So Kuna basically has to put, yeah, they drew a yellow. So Andres can go here for... Uh, another five points. It's pretty good. 73, looking good for Andres here. There's still a blue to come, so obviously a blue here is pretty good. Oh, and there's also three blacks. So what you really, you can't let a black uh, live here. Um, that's, uh, I'm not sure I like that. There's quite a few spaces that a black can't go, so I... Oh, that's awful, isn't it? What were they threatening to do there? That just gives... That just gives away six points. Am I being silly there? Can I pause? I'm not sure I can pause it. I think it just gives away six points, so I don't like that from Kuno. There were other places a brown can go. It wasn't like he was stuck for browns. There were three blacks to come. So what Andres is looking for is ideal places for blacks. This is a really good place for black. It gets him five, which means it can't go there, which means of the remaining five spots, three have to be black. So this spot gets you three. Either of these will get you three from there. This spot gets you three, and that's safe. So that's the only safe spot for a black currently. So what you might do is move this green across one. And the advantage of moving the green across one, it means that there are no safe spaces for blacks. It means every black is going to score at least three. So I quite like uh, the way Andres is placed now. I think, personally, I would move this green across one. And then you're looking for the three remaining blacks, all scoring three points each. At least three. So this is three. One of these two is three. Uh, this is three. If you move this out of the way, they can't place a black here or here. So I think by moving this across, you don't change your score. You lose this three points, but then you gain the three here. 
and then you'll get points for blacks. The best Kuno can do is to place a black here and a black here and a black here, which is eight, which is a score of 87. So I, I think, I think, although I haven't analysed it as, uh, as much as Orange just has, I think I like a green to this spot. Um, so that does gain Andres points, but now there's a safe space for black here. Yeah, so basically they moved the they moved the brown up. The brown is currently scoring three in this row. You move it up, it scores three here, but an additional two here. Uh, I don't like that. Um, I think my method would score at least 87 plus whatever you get for the other colours that have come out. So I was not a fan of that move. So there's a green, three blacks, a blue, and a red. Now the red's pretty safe, to be honest. There's a quite a few spaces for the red to go safely, so either of these spaces. There's one of the blacks, so you've given a space space for black now. So although I'm just gained two points for this brown move, my uh, my blacks would have all scored three, so we'll see. Maybe maybe he, he's, he, he spent, like, I skipped the move, he spent about two minutes on that move, so uh, it could just be he didn't see this, but uh, I'm just... Okay, so this, uh, yeah, that's nice. It gains you two points. And then a black in either of these spaces. It also means that a red is not safe here now. So a red will probably have to go in this bottom corner here. There are two blacks, a red and a blue. Yeah, so I imagine it's going to go something like... Yeah, so you move this across. Yeah, and now a blue is safe here. A red is safe here. Yeah. I think this is still a good move. I think I think realistically this green to here is still a good move. It basically means you're guaranteed to score points off your last black. I don't think it can hurt, can it? There's a black, a red and a green. Yeah, I don't think it can hurt. I think green to here can't hurt. Right, so that loses you a point. Yeah, I don't like that. I think green to here was better, wasn't it? They're going to put a red down here. They move the black up. You're going to put a green here and a red here. Yeah, because the way I'd have done it, I think it would have been very similar, but these two would be reversed, which would be another two points. And still, 90 from where they were at one point in the game, 90 is pretty good, 92 apologies. Um, so we're swapping over to watch Andres defend the lead of 92. It's looking good. Uh, of the games we've seen, 92 is the highest score we've seen today, and 92 is regarded as an excellent score. So... Does Andres get the win? Does Andres get the big enough win to affect the Pentamount standings? Remember, they need a top three finish in Entropy to affect the Pentamount standings. And 92, I think any of the top players would feel comfortable defending at 92. What I mean by that is that when you're when you um, go first as order and get a high score, uh, you feel comfortable defending it. I think the general principle is, although there's no tactical advantage in terms of the gameplay, I think the general principle is that most people prefer to play order second because they know what score to beat. If they have to beat a high score, they take more risks. I imagine they moved the blue down, yeah.
And then at some point they've got like a free split of this blue, so they can move this blue to here. So I think you could preempt that by placing a piece here. Okay. So I think you split the blues. Let's see what happens. Okay. See so what I would do is I would split the blues and then if they block here, you can just move the brown down, then they have to block here or you get or you get 8 points. So Yeah, that's not a possibility now. So I'm not sure I like that. Although, bear in mind these players are better than me. Uh, so we'll have a little look at the we see. Uh, we can see Andres has been slightly unlucky here because what you don't want to do is draw a lot of one colour at the start. Yeah, so at some point I think they'll split the blue to threaten the brown to the other side. So they can split the blue either way as well. So you could pre-block this. Yeah, so they've pre-blocked the split. So you could uh, yellow to here maybe? Yeah, okay, threatening yellow up. So that's the best place to block it. And what I mean by that, so basically you could have blocked any of these spots, but by blocking that one, you can't move it left because this blue's in the way. And remember, you want to be moving it to the edge if you can, so they could split these blacks. Okay, decided not to. And then they could just, they've, they've given the option now of white across. If they split the blacks, then it's a very easy block to move the yellow up, so they probably have just declined against it. They don't want to give the opportunity to Yeah, so putting the green there, generally not something I'd do. Maybe there's no good place for green. Yeah, so now, I, I, I'm not, I don't agree with that move either. I would generally put the green in an awkward position. So I'd put the green maybe somewhere like here or here, next is blue. They move the green up, so Andres has uh, put the red there to stop the split of the blue. The split of the blue is a pretty good move. So they're threatening this now. Uh, anything but a red or a blue will block it. So what have they drawn? Yeah, so uh, they could just move the brown. So they could just move the brown to the left here and threaten it again. I think that's sensible. Yeah, so I just could have put the brown here straight away. Okay. Uh, so you've got a couple of choices now. You could split the brown just to get a point. Yeah, they're just tidying things up. So because Andres has made at least two, if not no, Andres has made three blocks on the edge, that's three moves where Kuna doesn't have to move something to the edge. However, if this was the first game and Kuna was playing order first, that would be fine. But because Kuna has to beat 92, I believe they, uh, I believe Andres is just trying to defend his 92, so I'm not sure. Uh, oh, I missed that. I'm just going to go back. So, yeah, they're threatening black to this spot. So Andres could block it by placing the red here. So I missed that. Yeah, basically, they're trying to get a column. I think. Yeah, if they place the red here, which is I think what they did. Yeah, I. I think they've just get, they're just trying to block this column. They could have put the red here, but then they move black to the edge, and then they've got all this free space. So they're just giving five points away. No, sorry, eight points away, to try and start blocking things. Uh, it doesn't block it too much because this red is flexible. Anything can go in the middle there. So this red can, in theory, come to this edge. I think at some point maybe Kuno plays red to uh, G5. Now they're just tidying things up. So they move the blue out of the way to threaten the brown to the edge. Uh, they could now move the red to the edge. Uh, or they could move white to the corner. 
I don't like where it's going. I prefer red to the edge here. We'll see what happens. All right, so they're threatening um, brown to this spot. It's quite easy to block unless you draw brown, though. And because there's a piece here and here, you can block by placing one there. So you don't need to go on the edge. <clears throat> yeah, that's unlucky from Andres. Uh, Kuno drew brown. And the way Andres has placed this, they've got to be very careful because, yeah, that's, that's, that's sensible. They have to be very careful because just moving the yellow down or something threatens brown across. And this, a fourth brown here, would get you another nine points. And to get one piece to move for nine points is pretty high. Eight's about the highest you're accepted to do. So one of these eight pointers, one of the five in a row. Yeah, so the threatening yellow to top. Yeah, and white down. Nice little threat. Kuna's actually. Looking better than he was um, a few moves ago. But remember, he has to beat 92. And we can see from all the games we've got so far, 92 is no mean feat. Uh, I think red to this edge seems sensible. Oh, yeah, so, so Andrews has blocked that. So you could just move the yellow down. What you'd want... Yeah, and then the red to the edge doesn't make as good sense. What I mean by that is if this yellow wasn't here, red to the edge means you can either get yellow to the top and free some space, or red to the edge again just for two points. Again, you're clearing up like a column through this middle. Sorry, a row through this middle of the column. I think Andres has been a bit unlucky in drawing five of one colour and four of another. Yeah, although the blues aren't actually scoring too much. Yeah, so they've done the reds there now. So this is the, the threatening yellow to this spot and red to this spot. Now, obviously, yellow to this spot is six. Yeah, and uh, Andres has been unlucky. I think that's twice now that Andres has drawn the colour that Kuno was threatening the most points with. Um, which is a bit unlucky, to be honest. And there were only three yellows left in the bag, so the odds weren't great. And sometimes when you threaten things, there are two or three colours that you can't be blocked with. But in that case, there was only the one that was just yellow that would have... Uh, would have meant Andres can't block that. That's six points, and I think I think the same happened with the Browns over here. The Brown that went in at the top here for another five points. So that's 11 points that Andres hasn't been able to block. And that's coming up to half of Kuno's score. But you've just got to remember in this game, if you do play it, it's an excellent game, you should play it. It's great. It's, at the, it's, the, it's the only game that's been at the Man Sports Olympiad every year. So... Uh, you want to join a historic list of people by playing this game at some point in your life. Um, but in this game, you can't block everything. It's just not possible. Um, I think uh, I think moving this to the right here is pretty good. Yeah, that's the other option. Yeah, so... I think Kuno's in a decent place, uh, manoeuvrability-wise. I love that word. Their manoeuvrability is pretty good across the board. They've also got the blue to here, but they're not going to do that because that gives Andres a pocket. So you could just move red up. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So this is, yeah. So that was threatening yellow to this spot, which would have been another... Um, uh, another six. Uh, so they can now just... Yeah, so they're going to do that again. They're going to threaten the same thing again. Yellow to here. They can't block it. Yeah, so now they go red to the bottom. Yeah. Uh, a good move back here now, because this yellow can either go here or here, so that this, this yellow can score three points regardless. Um, and it just gives... 
Kuna a chance to tidy some things up. Yeah, they're doing that to stop this blue coming out, I guess, at some point in the future. I mean, the other poss other possibilities for moving this green is you can, again, just try and get this horizontal line you've got. So you could put the green here, which is pretty safe. Uh, so this is another threat, again, yellow to here. There's no point moving this yellow while you can still threaten this spot. Um, and if this gets blocked again, I remember, you can't really block it with a yellow or a black. Uh, although black only scores four, the yellow will score six. So if you do have a black, maybe you have to bite the bullet. Um, but the other possibilities, if you draw a black, you can potentially put the black somewhere else. And, yeah, so that that's pretty bad. <coughs> Green's pretty bad. That scores five. Uh, you can potentially stop the brown coming down now because by, by blocking with the green, uh, they have to spend their turn moving it. And in theory, you can... Yeah, red's pretty... Is that the last red? Yeah, so you've drawn all the reds and it's only just past the halfway point in the game. So that's also pretty unlucky. So I think Andres has been... I think this threat's been, not been as bad as the other two. So this one scored six and this one scored five. They was just unlucky from Andres' point of view. They were the only colours that um, would be bad for Andres to draw out the bag. So I guess you move Brown down. Oh, uh, you've got this, yeah. Oh, and Andres drew a blue, so they couldn't block that either. Oh, wow. Kuno is getting pretty, pretty... I will say he's he has to play risky. He has to try for these high-scoring things because he's... Uh, he's got to try and beat 92. So I'm not saying Kuno's be playing bad. Kuno's playing to be lucky and getting it. <clears throat> but I was saying the, the yellow to this one, this threat, which Kuno threatened two or three times, that was fine because there were three colours that Andres can draw that Kuno could benefit from. Uh, I imagine you bring, at some point, you bring the band down to the bottom. And apologies if I'm talking too fast. I'm reacting to the speed in these pl the, these players are playing this game. So, right, all the reds are gone. There's only one brown left, uh, which means there's going to be a lot of some of the other colours. There's, there's four whites, which is the most prevalent colour to come. Yeah. So, Andres is just stopping the brown coming down. So, in theory, you could move the blue up. Uh, yeah, that's quite nice. So, now, at some point, you can threaten... Um, you probably don't want to do that, because to threaten a yellow to this spot, you have to move this yellow out of the way, so that's not great. There's three greens to come, though. So, if you can imagine, you can see how good greens will be in this gap. Yeah, so there goes, there goes one of the greens. Green's safe there, and you stop the blue coming up to join this blue here. <clears throat> I wonder if you just move this blue across to here. Yeah, for some points. So if we have a quick check of the scores, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 twos is 26, so Kuno is looking to score about 79. So it looks like the win that Andres needs... Currently, uh, can Kuna do anything to change it? I think they've already been fairly lucky uh, to score what they've scored so far, but the expectation of two points per remaining space seems a sensible one so far, and it puts Kuna on a score of just under 80, so we will see what they can do from here. What they'd really like to do is threaten a green to this point, but because they haven't got an easy threat to come, I, yeah, that's just three points. I think Andres is just pre-blocking that so that they wouldn't threaten a yellow to here. But because uh, they haven't got an easy way to get a green to threaten this one, I don't think that's ever going to happen. Andres has two, two greens left to come. This is, um, that's not safe for green, is it? Yeah, green can go in this spot and then the other green will score... Two or three points. But what from Anch's point of view, there are four whites to come. Which is not great. 
four whites, two greens, a yellow, two blacks, and a brown, and a blue. Yeah, so that gains you an extra point. The colour that was good for you to get there was green, but Andres is never going to put a green there, and because your flexibility is pretty bad in this, this corner, uh, you were never going to be able to threaten that. So you've just extended your lead, and again, you've now got a couple of columns. You can see at the end of the game, compared to the end of Andres' game, Kuna's got two columns here. So the potential to score higher when you've got flexibility at the end of the game is there. And I think also another bit of luck is to have your opponent needing a lot of uh, one colour left to come out of the bag. So this is the last blue. Uh, that's just gone in a safe space. And Kuna is going to be looking to potentially. I know it looks bad. I wonder if you can move this blue down one. It loses you a point, but it takes away this free spot. <clears throat> it basically means this is a this is for example. This is a safe space for like a black or a green or some of the other colours that haven't yet have yet to come out. Not so much for a black actually, because this this one goes across one. But uh, okay, so I was thinking of doing this. I'm not sure whether it's the correct thing to do, but basically this scores five now as opposed to the four it scored. So Kuno has broken up his own connectivity by losing a point. Uh, but he's threatening. Oh, uh, I think maybe he's playing for his luck. He's threatening this. I didn't see this. So basically, moving to here, we'll score five. So it hasn't actually cost you anything. You've 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 lost four points to gain five. So it gets you one point, but your flexibility is poor. However, green to this spot gets you another eight. It's currently scoring six. If you put a green there, it'll score fourteen. Oh wow! I think Andres has missed this. I think Andres has missed this. He should have put a black in that gap to stop that. So the game is back on. The, not only did Andres not block that, but look at the, the shape he's got. That fact that Kuno can move the green out of the way again means he's still got all his flexibility. So black here gains, you lose a point from this column, but gain three here, so that gains you two points. Right, that is one of the penultimate greens. Yeah, I don't think he's going to catch up. It's 29 points in it, so with one, two, it's 30 points in it now. But this is, I mean, th that looks like a weird move, but basically now there's there's not many safe places for greens. So you can move this green here if you need to. Ah, this is quite nice, actually. This green here, actually, apologies, incorrect. I'm going to leave that. Uh, this green here means you probably should be able to get a white into this gap at some point. <clears throat> because there are three whites to come out of six, so half the time you'll get a white. Alright, so Kuno is making a last-ditch attempt to score some points. A black to this spot gains Kuno another eight. Uh, apologies, you lose, you lose these three to gain eight. Uh, so it's a gain of five, but um, yeah, like you said, there's only six tiles left. Oh, um, I just couldn't block it. So do you actually place it here now? Under there's still three whites to come. Oh, and there's a white here. Look at this. Look at this. There's a white here, which um, you'll be guaranteed to get, which gets you four. And there's three whites to come. I'm not sure you can. Can you guarantee a white there? I don't think you can guarantee it, but it's quite likely you'll get a white in this space as well, which will be another uh, six plus four is ten. That's seventy-eight. Hmm. Oh, so green down actually increases your score. So wherever they draw, they have to put it here, and if it's a white. Yeah, so green down, I think, increases your score. 
apologies, green across is the same thing. Uh, in fact, it's even better. Green across is even better because then this green stays here for this one. A white here. Uh, still two whites to come. It's 81 to 92. Oh, my God. Uh, you're guaranteed a white here, so that's another four. So it's going to be 85 to 92. You're guaranteed another white for three. Yeah, you don't want to put the brown in this one because it goes here. So there's two whites to come. So white here and white here gets you two plus three plus four is nine. That gets you uh, that gets you to 90. What's the last colour? What's the last colour? It is yellow. Huh. Is there any way to get another three points from somewhere? So you've got to be careful. So basically, if you can get a yellow in this spot, you win, I think. So if you can move the white out, Yeah, so you've got to be careful. So yellow in this spot would win you the game. So you've got to stop that. So basically, if Kuno's move is to... So I maybe... I'm just... Mid -mis yeah, you can't really put a white there. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's fine. Uh, a white to here. I think if you then draw a white, you have to put it in the same spot. Yeah, okay. So they've drawn a yellow. Um, oh, that gets you three. I think he's won. I think he wins by a point. Oh, wow. What an excellent, excellent move. I think it actually came down to the point where Kuno got the green space here. Kuno moves the green from the... He had three greens here. If we just go back, let's go back a few turns. I think it was this turn here. So blue goes in the gap. That's a safe place for blue. Remember, Arnish is just trying to reduce the scores. Ignore the scores at the moment. They don't decrease. It was this move here where Kuno gained a point and Andres didn't block this space. So I think that's the mistake that made because I think blocking, putting the, I think Andres drew a black tile and they put it down the bottom here. I think putting a black here um, not only stops the green to the top, it also cuts off the freedom that Kuno then had. So what happened was black went in the bottom Kuna moved here to get uh, another eight points on the top. So basically, I say it gained another eight. They, ha they already had um, five here. They lost five here for the palindrome to gain the eight. Um, but they gained the flexibility. Look at all this flexibility that they have now. That they were able to keep to the end of the game with four whites to come. They were able to keep to the end of the game. They were able to pair this black up. I think, again, potentially Andres' next move should have been here to stop this black going across. They drew a white. Uh, maybe not. Uh, but maybe, yeah, maybe even so. Because now, the, because there were still four whites to come, they were, uh, Kuno was able to force a white into this spot. And there's still two greens to come as well. So Kuno was able to... Uh, negate and I believe Kuna was able to get a green in this spot as well so yeah so they threatened this I want this is a weird move as well Andres drew a black so yeah I guess yeah I guess they drew a black so they placed it here so basically another interesting move so this is pretty annoying basically what Kuna threatened to do is to go here for another um, lots of points this is currently six, moving that to there will be 14. So this will be another eight points, losing three, yeah, gaining eight, so a swing of five points. And Andres drew a black, which is kind of the one color they can't block this move with. Um, and then Andres' choice to put the black here. Well, where do you put the black? You can't, you can't realistically put it down here, can you? Because that will get you more. So you could put it up the top here. If you put it here, then when they move this black across, it gets them five. So what Arn just did is this. They put uh, they put the black in this spot, which meant that Kuno didn't need to move this over, and then they kept the flexibility. So I wonder whether it would have been better for Arn just to put this black one up here. Okay, you're going to give them points wherever you put it, but if you put it up here, you kind of cut off the the board into two. Uh, as it was, Kuno was then able to. Um, I think move the white across, yeah, to threaten uh, the green to here, which is loads of points. 
Andres decided not to block it again. I wonder if Andres is better to block that. I'm analysing the play quite a lot, but it was so interesting because at one point, uh, with about seven or eight tiles to go, Andres had a 30-point lead and ended up losing by a point. So really, really interesting game. Look for the whole game that Andres was going to get the big win he needed, and I'm afraid he didn't. So we're going to take that. We're going to look at the final standings. We're on the wrong page there. The final standings here. These are the final standings. So basically throughout the event, we've been looking at the top 14 players as they finished as they move around through the event. So Dave Jameson is, you can see, his very last match against James Heppel, who we saw beat Paco. Uh, they were fighting for the gold medal effectively, given James, James Jameson won by six points, six victory points over Paul Colk uh, to win his sixth World Championship of Entropy. He's won the last five in a row. So congratulations to David. I did have a session with David the week before this event just to give me some tips. So thank you very much, David. Uh, I managed to came 11th myself on my very first uh, event. So uh, at 48, I'm pretty happy with that. Paul Colk, slightly unlucky they were doing victory points this year because Paul Colk well, went undefeated. However, two of his victories were ever, ever so slightly narrow. He beat David Jameson by one point, beat James Heppel by one point. Uh, however, David Jameson beat James Heppel by quite a lot, by a lot more than one point. So although they played the same people, David Jameson did better. So that's how he's come across, even though he lost a game, how his victory points have kind of pushed him to that win. We see uh, Martin Hamer. Uh, I believe it's Merry Man he was playing under the moniker of, um, losing heavily twice in rounds three and four to some of the top players. He lost heavily to Andres and then lost heavily again to, I believe it was, uh, oh, I can't remember who that was, to David Pierce. So lost heavily, but had three stonking wins to finish with to sneak the bronze medal away from Paco. If Paco had won his last match 20 0, he'd have taken it, but he didn't, sadly. And Paco had to be settled for fourth. We can see Kuna there. Winning the Battle of the Estonians in fifth place. David Pierce, all-time leading medal winner. Had two heavy losses, but five big wins to get him into sixth place. Uh, Andres Kusk in seventh place, failing to get the score he needed to in Kupuba's Pentamine. And in eighth place, James Heppel. We saw him there, lost the gold medal match quite heavily uh, to David Jameson to uh, sadly finish outside the medals uh, once more. Uh, that has been the entropy... Uh, review from the event that happened last Sunday. Um, I'm filming this on Monday morning, so by the time you watch it, I think two weeks will have passed from the event. Uh, yeah, I think you'll be watching this on Friday, so hopefully uh, everything's going well for you, and hopefully with a few days left, you've got time to join in some of the last events for the Man Sports Olympiad this year. Throughout the month of August, we've been playing online. Uh, my name's been Steve Rain. Thank you for watching. If you've got any comments, please message them on the YouTube chat or something. I'll get back to them. Uh, and please, please, please... Uh, watch more of the streams as they're coming along and join in some of the games yourself. That's why we play games for to have fun. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.